Before the arrival of white colonists, many Native American tribes and groups lived in the region of what is now the southern United States. One of the most prominent groups were the Powhatan, an Algonquian-speaking group that lived in present-day Virginia and Maryland. The Powhatan consisted of an alliance of several hundred villages, approximately 15,000 people united under Chief Powhatan. Distinct gender roles defined Powhatan culture. Women were responsible for farming, primarily corn, squash, and beans, as well as gathering plants. They were also in charge of raising the children, making clothing, baskets, and other goods, and building houses. Men hunted, fished, built dugout canoes, and defended the tribe. Contrary to European societies, Powhatan society was matrilineal, meaning that family ties were traced through the mother. The Powhatan generally built their villages on high ground near bodies of water such as rivers or streams. The villages consisted of anywhere from two to 100 houses, each accommodating between six and 20 people. Powhatan houses were built using bent saplings. The trees were then covered with reeds and bark. A large hole was left in the roof of each house to allow smoke from the cook fire to escape. Two other tribes living in the southern colonies were the Cherokee and the Muscogee, also called the Northern Creeks. The Cherokee, an Iroquoian tribe, lived in primarily present-day Georgia, Tennessee, and the Carolinas, while the Muscogee lived in present-day Georgia. The Cherokee and Muscogee were constantly prepared for war. Both the Cherokee and Muscogee had a red chief and red villages to lead in times of war, and a white chief and white villages in times of peace. The Cherokee's villages and towns contained log cabins featuring a single door and a hole to let smoke escape. Cherokee towns consisted of 30 to 60 homes and generally featured a council house. The Muscogee built their homes using wattle and daub, a technique consisting of woven sticks and reeds covered with a layer of mud or clay. Bacon's Rebellion of 1676 marked a turning point in the relationship between colonists and local tribes and arose from differences of opinion on how to deal with Susquehannock raids on European settlements in Virginia. Causes of the rebellion began in 1675. The colony faced a number of economic concerns, including a decrease in tobacco prices and increased competition from nearby colonies. At the same time, the colony also faced extreme weather and natural disasters. Tensions reached a breaking point in July 1675. A group of Doeg Indians led a raid on the farm of Thomas Matthews. The raiders claimed Matthews had not paid them for goods he had taken from the tribe. Infuriated, the colonists decided to retaliate and lead a raid of their own. The misguided colonists, however, led a raid on the wrong tribe, the Susquehannocks, and this triggered numerous attacks by neighboring tribes. Sir William Berkeley, the governor of Virginia, tried to broker a peace between the colonists and Native Americans, but his efforts failed. In defiance of Berkeley, Nathaniel Bacon Jr., a Virginia colonist and cousin to the governor, took matters into his own hands, leading a raid against the friendly Appomattox tribe and capturing several of its members. Berkeley continued his efforts to calm hostilities. In March 1676, his assembly declared war on hostile tribes, established a defensive perimeter around Jamestown, and restricted trade with Native Americans. Unfortunately, the measures backfired. The colony needed to increase taxes to build and man a defensive wall. And trade restrictions negatively impacted traders like Bacon. In a second act of defiance against Berkeley, Bacon was elected the leader of a rebel group determined to drive all Native Americans from Virginia. He and his followers attacked the peaceful Okanichi tribe. Berkeley responded by pursuing Bacon with 300 men. Bacon refused to turn himself in, but he returned to Jamestown in June 1676 after being elected to the House of Burgesses, the colony's governing body. He was then captured and forced to apologize to Berkeley. In a surprising turn of events, however, Bacon's supporters swarmed the State House and forced Berkeley to flee the colony. Bacon maintained control over Virginia until he died of fever in October 1676. Berkeley put down the remainder of the rebellion and hung 23 of Bacon's followers. By now, though, the damage was irreparable. Anti-Native American sentiment had taken root in the colony, 
and many of the relationships between the colonists and peaceful tribes were destroyed. <laughs>